So we have a question that is occurring in the nature that uh, why Hindu dharma became a religion. So I have two factors here, both are related to law of karma. Number one, I read as law of karma functions firmly, but it was made to believe that one can be forgiven, say by making certain offerings to certain temples or by taking bath in Ganga that may wash their sins. So here the law of karma is well understood that what goes around comes around or what you reap, what you sow. Of course, there is a time gap that is gestation period. Sometimes that may be very long, but uh, the common person knows that all our actions are going to be, will be bringing certain rewards sooner or later. And there is a correlation. If your karma is according, in accordance with dharma, then it brings a pleasant reward called sukha. And if it is contrary to dharma, then it brings sukha, pain and suffering. Now, that being the case, yet a significant fraction of Hindu population now think or believe that they can get away from their sins by making certain offerings to temples or certain charity or even visiting certain pilgrimage or taking bath in certain rivers. So they implicitly think as if forgiveness from Ishwar can happen if they can please him. So that is uh, that has seriously affected the Hindu population and has caused this decline. There is another related factors that I have taken together. Number two says law of karma got lost and people began to believe in astrology including horoscopes, pharmacy, numerology and many other similar concepts. So that has another thing that has hurt where the is an implicit belief in fate and uh, as if the fate is marked by something like horoscope or the lines on my palms or certain other astrological calculations and then then they add on certain things some astrologer will say if you do this and that then those ill effects are can be removed or can be subdued so both the factors that i have mentioned have something to do with uh, circumventing the law of karma, which is uh, not possible at all. Okay, the second question I take up, this came last week towards the end and was uh, in the nature of an overview of different darshans, books of philosophy. So in part A, last week I shared an idea that was based on a thinking that human, at least in India, the ancient human history is more in the nature of devolution. And in that way, we noticed clearly that literature has three distinct uh, platforms, namely Vedic, literature, then Upanishadic, and then the six books of Vedic philosophy. I also commented that there is a fourth body of literature, very huge body, that is called Vedanga, which has 
six disciplines shiksha vyakaran nyukti chand kalp and jyotish so they are very very huge body of literature and the purpose of vedang was that rishis were very mindful that future generations should be able to come back to the uh, vedas so they can study the vedas in the original form and that's why they created the vedang also now coming to vedic and upanishadic the difference was that message is same literary style is also same both have mantras whereas in upanishad there was a population whose memory was slightly diminishing so they wanted gist of the vedas and uh, they were not that comfortable with 20000 ved mantras now further decline in human capacity now another factor has come that people begin to toy with the idea of materialistic life and uh, they wanted to experiment with you know worldly pleasures and so on and so forth otherwise vedic way of life is uh, very balanced abhyudaya and shreyas both so we gain the material science avidya mrityum tetva so that i can survive in the world so material science is not final objective it is more like means but finally i want vidya that is paya vidya the spiritual science that brings uh, liberation vidya ammitam ashnute so this was very clear in vedic age and upanishadic age but now in the later part there was a slight uh, shift in materialistic life over now kapil is the first in this series he writes sankhya so because memory is weak now it is in the sutra shaili what is called aphorisms so that these are short sentences uh, formulations actually this verb is usually missing so but it facilitates the memorization and also here there is a, another factor is argumentative in vedas and upanishads they just a statement of truths and beliefs they are very seldom there are any arguments but now rishis are talking in argumentative style and literary style is also different but kapil sank is i will say targeted towards very small fraction of population who are just about to experiment with the materialistic life but uh, majority of them are in the vedic way of life so this slightly i uh, i am not digressing at this point otherwise i have to talk about another topic which is a vedic way to look at human community in three categories you know so like sankh also mentions that three kinds of adhikaris you know but uh, his book is targeted towards the superior category of people who are slightly um, bent towards materialistic life now comes patanjali by his time things have devolved significantly now there are three categories of human society and he wants to package his message which is basically essentially that of sankhya but he is more how people can adapt it and now his teaching is for three kinds of people which in their terminology is for uttam madhyam and adham you know the average people and superior and the below average people so here he gives a, a talks about yam and niyam ahimsa etc because there are significant people who are violating these moral codes of conduct which was not the case with sankhya in sankhya that was not needed 
because there were nobody in that category. Okay, now comes in Nyaya. You know, these are paired, these six books, Sankh Yog, Nyaya Vaisheshik, Mimansa and Vedanta. So Nyaya comes, uh, Nyaya authored by Gautam, he's formulating the book of logic because now in the arguments, people are using fallacies. You know, they are arguing with a mischievous intention, you know. So that is called Jalp, uh, Vitanda and things like that, Hetwa Bhash. So they use a certain fallacious logic just to prove their point. So Gautam is trying to establish the methods of debate and uh, how it should be held properly to ascertain the truth. And that becomes philosophy of logic called as Nyaya. Now comes Vaisheshik. In case of Vaisheshik is very much like uh, physics, so to say, but he is uh, uh, slightly different from Sankhya. Sankhya is, say, going from Paketi to Mahat to Ahanka and Panchatanmata, etc. And from Panchatanmata, what is called Panchbhut, they are given a name, a general term is Vishesh, because uh, out of Panchbhut, all these are, these are specific things, like what we have in our world, you know, a desk is a desk, a chair is a chair, where there is no confusion. This is Vishesh. In the, so anything that is made of Panchbhut is called Vaisheshik, you know. So Kanad, who is the author of Vaisheshik, his periodic table, so to say, begins with Panchbhut, whereas Sankhya begins with Paketi, Mahat, Panchatanmata, and uh, in these and so on and so forth. He is at much lower basic level, but uh, this is at a slightly starting point is Vishesh. That's why it calls talks about Vaisheshik. By this time, of course, the people are more materialistic. So he is trying to suggest, yes, we ought to know the dharma of everything, you know, and uh, without that, we cannot have holistic development that he called as Abhyudha and Shreyas. So he says to proper development in this worldly life and also that this life leads to my next superior level as if I have made some progress in the spiritual sense also. I need to know the actual dharma of all the things. So he talks about nine things that ought to be known. Now there we have. So what are they? They are the Panchabhut plus Disha and Kal and the Atma and Man. So what he's saying is a proper understanding of all these substances will lead to your Abhuda and Nishayas both. So Yishis are always trying to give a holistic message for the masses that are at that point of time. Now things are further devolving. And now, you know, if you look at Sank and Yog, then that is Upasana is the common denominator. If you come to Nyaya Vaisheshik, then Jyan is the, knowledge is the common denominator. Now in Mimansa, the Kaim becomes the common denominator. So, you know, when a society or a human being goes through decline, these are the three levels. You lose Upasana then you begin to take interest in bookish knowledge. If you are further declined, you take interest in the karma, you know, what is visible action, which is, which is visible to all others. Even Agnihot, nothing bad about it, but when you do it with an intention that I am organizing a big event, invite 200 people and all that, then there's a lot of show off in this kind of a thing, is it not? So this is a grading you have to remember. Upasana, if you lose out Upasana, you will fall upon Jyan. If you lose out interest in knowledge, you will come fall upon Karma. And then Karma will also go rotten in a bad way. Then you are all gone, is it not? Even if you save your Karma and you are always on the direction of Dharma, 
then you will not get uh, liberation moksha because every karm will always bring its reward so that is called sansar chakra so you will always be in sansar chakra but you will at least be a dharmic person you know a good human being so that is uh, where the things stand so in murmansa he his philosophy is athato dharm vyakhyasyam you know i i will talk to you about dharma you are talking about karm so he says chodana lakshano dharma what he says is whatever is described in the vedas you know it is called vidhi ling so what are the do's described in the vedas that is your dharma you know that should be your karm so he is now coming here and now he says that common people is why should i bother about vedas then he says the shabd nitya hai so ved ke shabd nitya hai that is eternal knowledge so his philosophy is in karma and also he goes into the philosophy of eternity of the words the words in the vedas so you know what patanjali also calls tatya niyati shayam sarvajya bijam so parmatma is sarvajya as well as he has the seed of that so even after the bam yati it doesn't get lost it is he comes back again with the same words you know so agni mide is the same whether in the current universe phase or in the next or the previous one now the time has further come downgraded that people even begin to question existence of ishwar hmm? like in today's time you know nobody is uh, interested in bam etc and of course nobody is interested in upasana not much interested in vedic knowledge so you know we have fallen down from upasana to jnan to karm and now we are in a muddy state where is free for all anything somebody can kill somebody you know like isis they just you know anybody can do anything and just recently china uh, you know there is a human rights council and uh, they have said that china's introduction of hong kong that's new security rule is not violating human rights because 52 countries who have said yes for china they are all violating the human rights like venezuela sudan ethiopia and all those kind of countries so this is the majority now you cannot uh, it's a very difficult situation but anyway we go back about 6000 years so that time then this is called uttar mimamsa or vedant or so he has to write a book on bam athato bam jijyasa trying to prove that ishwar exists so this is a short chronology of our six books of vedic philosophy and uh, in the historical perspective of ancient indian history probably kapil's time i will say must be of the order of a million years from now and the last pair the by jamini and uh, badayan badayan is the teacher of jamini but this third pair is paired as who mimamsa is mimamsa by jamini and uh, bam sutra vedant is called as uttar mimamsa that is by badayan so do badayan is senior but his book is counted at the sixth one not fifth so that is the situation then comes mahabharat war about another 1000 years later and then comes uh, buddhism and jainism and then murti puja then comes uh, shankar he has a debate with mandan mishra so at least buddhism was uh, removed from major part of india but uh, then shankar do he advocated for vedic but he didn't go as far as vedas his prasthanta is only gita vedanta and upanishad so but he did some that's why he is sankhya chai only he is not a quite a rishi or that because he wrote a, something like isti shuddho na dhitam that women and shuddha should be stay away from the vedas so then finally we have oh so much to then because he has removed all those discrepancies so just now i was talking 
like I am from engineering science background, but I can also get to the meaning of the Vedas. It's all because of Dayanand's contribution. So now there is a slight hope. Things are, and politically things are getting better in India. So we are at least politically independent. And now there is a greater sense of independence in India. There is a Indian culture is being seen. But of course, Vedas are very much obscured. At most, people talk in terms of Gita, you know. So there is a lot of work is needed. And uh, Aishmaj can do much work. But Aishmaj is also, as I said, has fallen away from Upasana, from Jyan, and now is in the Karm. So it has to retrace its path. So as you might be personally knowing, I am very dedicated towards Upasana, but uh, there is not money takers for that. Not many people take interest in Upasana. So that is an overview of things. We have some time if there is 